350 did pretty well there, Gary. Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story. And today we have a great Oldsmobile for you. I'm with Gary. Gary, your last name? My last name is Blythe. And what did you bring today? That is a 1970 Oldsmobile Cutlass Rally 350. The Oldsmobile Cutlass Rally 350. And if you saw the Rally 350 back in the day, you never forgot it because that was etched into your mind. So what I'll do is I'll give you right off the bat a shot from back here because we specifically put it in this white space so that you can get a chance to see what that looks like. I'll give it just a moment to take that in. So here we have, we've turned it around so we can get a little light off the bottom with the white there so that you can see the Oldsmobile and in front of it it has the cutlass. Now, Gary, tell me about these bumpers. Um, they're urethane coated, or at least they were back in the day. Um, so they were basically steel bumpers like the rest of the cars had. Instead of being bump, they were coated with urethane. Certainly was something different. Uh, monochromatic cars, as you know, didn't seem to be popular until much, much later than this. So it kind of blazed a trail, although back in the day, from everything I've read, uh, the all yellow everywhere was as popular popular as you might think it was, and some dealers actually would take and put chrome bumpers back on them to make them look a little more cutlass-like. Cutlass. Yeah, cutlass. -like. So these hood pins were with the car. Yes. Let's pop those and show them how this is. And you drive this one. I do drive. Absolutely, I love driving this car. It gives them all kinds of attention because of the color, and not a lot of people have seen them. Boy, I can't tell you the last time. I've seen a Rally 350. You do, that is one of the things I do remember about these is that that'll catch you. Uh, yeah, and in 71 and 72, this part no longer was a part of the hood because believe me, I've smacked my head on it. They mounted it down here in 71 and 72 and eliminated it right across at that point because let me tell you, it'll hurt. Yeah, that, I've done that before. Yep. So I like how it is now. Did it come with air conditioning? This one came with air conditioning, yes. That's great. Power steering, power brakes, uh, power disc brakes. It's pretty well off the car, actually. Did it come with the crew valve covers? Um, I don't think so, because everything I've seen in the literature was always the gold painted. But those are definitely old mobile valve covers, whether it was changed in the day or went down the assembly line that way. I don't know. Normally that is on um, And you'll notice on that that it's LA and the Lansing. All of these were made in Lansing, Michigan. You'll notice it's got dash dash with the paint coat, which of course it was a special order paint coat. The only paint color you could get this one was uh, code 51 Sebring Yellow. But let's uh, keep, keep the hood open. Let's sure. uh, let's uh, let me listen to it idle. We'll have you step on the brakes. Sure. Step on the brakes if you could. Those taillights are nice. And it had these trumpet exhaust tips. Yeah, that was part of the Rally 350 uh, mandatory options. So with the cutouts in the bumper and the trumpet exhaust, dual will exhaust like you would have gotten on a 442. They had 70 had the four taillights going this way. 71, they had a one box that was divided. I always tell the difference as the years go down, but again, this was only in the 70s, so you can see how the difference is happening. Say, I'll put the baby to sleep. Let's give it a rest, shall we? Yes, and these would not have been delivered with uh, trim rings. Uh, they came without trim rings. Dealers also put them on the cars. A lot of half cars you see will have them on. I personally like them on as opposed to not. But Let's turn it around and we'll show the back. And the so here we are in the back with the unmistakable Sebring Yellow from the Rally 350. And that looks good in your windshield. 
unmistakable car when you saw one. So 7045, what does that stand for? 70 the year, what's the W45? W45 was the Rally 350 option package. It was what was required uh, when you check the W45, the mandatory options would come. Everything from the color to the basic options such as the spoiler and the forced air induction and the trumpet exhaust, the sport steering wheel, the sports uh, side mirrors, the rally wheels, the FE2 suspension, and uh, the components that basically made this car what it is, which is of course also the decal pack. So here we are in our trunk and treats, for those of you who like them, and we have the nice carpeted mat, as you can see. Gary, tell me about this spare. Was that, I could see the, the paint yellow on the opposite side and the spray through. Is that the way it came? Or? I think so. I mean, it looks like factory markings on it, so certainly they painted them on the front side it didn't make any sense for anything you know to be worried about the inside so. yeah and we have the uh, jack stowage along with the jack instructions and share with me these trunk and treats these are good ones well this basically is an ad from the day i like to put it on the windshield so somebody understands what this car is all about because Do this dr. car dr rosemobile dr rosemobile Okay. Standing behind his Rally 350 for 1970. It basically was mandatory options on uh, either an F85 Cutlass or the Holiday or the Cutlass S Sports Coupe. And they basically made about 3,547 total of the three different models. But the mandatory options included the forced air or cold air induction, the spoiler, the trumpet exhaust, dual exhaust, the rally wheels, the sports steering wheel, and of course the Ram Air that goes with this, the particular hood that's there and of course it was yellow from bumper to bumper including the urethane coated bumpers on the front and the back an awful lot of yellow for its day I have to admit yeah right let's see the next piece that you have share with me what this is I picked this one up and it's basically an order form for a rally 350 that the dealer would have used and as you can see there are mandatory options that are on there fe2 rally suspension for example the D35 styled sport mirrors, which is something I forgot to mention. It came with an L74, which was a 350, 310 horsepower. That was the only engine that was available on the car. And again, the W45 was checked and it basically listed the things, but then mandatorily checked them off. Then like any other car back in the day, you could go back through and order whether you wanted a four speed or a automatic transmission. This car has got an automatic. This car has got air conditioning, tinted glass, power steering, power disc brakes, you know, and the rest of the items as it went down, uh, including the bucket seat interior. Everybody assumes that, uh, you know, bucket seats were, you know, standard, but no, a bench seat was standard in this car. Uh, this, this particular car was ordered with bucket seats, which is one of the reasons I liked it. And again, it also has the console in there as well. Let's go right back to the car. Sure. One thing that I wanted to make sure I didn't forget before showing the interior is that Cutlass Yes, is that for Sport or Supreme? This is the Sports Coupe. So sports this would have been coupe. the top, top of the, the Cutlass line. About 2,547, I think is what it said, or some 2,525 were of this model. So as we move into the interior, you have your General Motors badge. We open up the door. Very nice door, right? We've got carpeting and a little wood grain in there. The S up here is a nice touch. Let me show the overall interior. I'll show these buckets, which Gary had to have. Yep, that was one of the requirements for me. And I really do love the Oldsmobile Sports steering wheel. You know, it, it takes a three-spoke wheel and makes it Oldsmobile by, you know, changing the alignment and throwing the extra one in. There you go. Lots of room in the back. Nice headrest. A nice little throw stick there with the wood grain up our console. See if I can, uh, there's a button in the back in the center. You can see, you can go all the way up the console there. So let me pull that back. You're greeted by the body by Fisher. And as we take a look at the interior, everything nicely Listed out, wipers, low, high, lights, your fuel, speedometer, 
Now it says 77,000 miles. Is that original? Uh, I think it says 87. Uh, no, it says 77. Oh, well, yeah, like with too many cars. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. I believe it to be, yes, it was uh, came to me in a title that indicated as such, and when I registered it, I indicated as such here, so. Okay. And the cutlass there. You got the vent ventilation for the air. Really nice, comfortable interior. And with that nice, comfortable interior, Jerry, I think we got to take this one for a ride. I'd love to. You want to take it for a ride? Yeah, let's do let's it. Let's go. So I'm here with Gary, and we're already doing some little quirky, squirrely do driving. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Look at the curves. But this thing handles the curves perfectly, as you can see. No squeaks, no rattles. And being in Oldsmobile, the sway bar, the whole thing, it's just marvelous. I think so, too. You know, it handles with the sports suspension, the FE2, you don't get a lot of body roll. Does it handle like a new car? No, but it is a 50 plus year old car. And uh, it's just, it's enjoyable to drive. It's enjoyable from the attention that it does get. Tell me about that. You know, I get people all the time, you go by a bus stop or something and, and, <laughs> and people will give you a thumbs up. I go by the school that we're kind of going by here and surely little kids will all point you know, even big people haven't seen this car before, so I think it makes a statement to me. And as I tell everybody, what I like about this car is it screams 1970. The color combination, the stripes, you know, the orange and black stripes on a yellow car. If that isn't 1970, uh, right. you know, I don't know what would be. It really, uh, uh, it, it truly is a car that I can remember because it's unmistakable when you see one. And, and I can't tell you the last time I seen one, so it's so exciting to have this car on the channel because it, it does stir back memories. And how, I mean, how many of them did they originally make? It wasn't many. Uh, 3,500 and change is okay. what I believe is the official number. Have you ever seen an, oh, excuse me, have you ever seen another one? Uh, in Arizona, no. The, I think the last one I saw, believe it or not, was at a car show in Canada, and that was uh, quite a number of years ago. So, so even you don't see that? No, no. Yeah, that tells you how unique this car is to, to seeing it. And not only that, but I mean, it just drives wonderfully. How long did it take you to try to find this one? Uh, quite a number of years. It was one of those things I was always passively hunting, you know, and uh, one happened to come up and uh, I made an offer and I thought it was kind of, it was a couple of thousand dollars off of where I thought it should sell. Yeah. And the guy that I bought it from had a really large car collection. He's a big uh, boat racer on the East Coast. And I think he was just happy it was going to go to a car guy. Yeah, there to take, you go. You know, passing the stewardship to the next person. Why did you have to have this car? What made this car out of all the cars in the world? The car that said, yeah, Gary, I'll take this one. I just like the way it looks. I mean, back in the day, I mean, uh, I'm of an age that I would have seen these driving around. Uh, not specifically this, but maybe like a 442 W30 car. Yeah. And I always liked the way the hood on this car looked. And this being yellow, just, it spoke to me. This is my grandson's favorite car, by the way. Too. Is that right? Yeah, this is the one that he likes. Of all the cars that I have, <laughs> this is the yellow one. He'll always ask what car did I bring, and he always hopes that I bring this one. So. Well, that is great. What's your grandson's name? We'll give him a shout My out. My grandson's name is Dean, and yes, he'll watch us on the video. Dean, too. <laughs> we're, we're taking the yellow one out today. Well, speaking of that, as we go over a speed bump here, sorry. no problem. Always so much fun, Gary, to hang out with you and share Thank one you. of your cars. Thanks so much for being on the channel. It's a pleasure, and we can do this again with maybe one of my other rides. Sounds great. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you.